Hello, everybody. So we are here to talk about collaboration we've done recently um, with um, our friends here from Genealogy and Enrhyme. So um, I joined Tencel in 1995, and Tencel came into the market about 1992. So we're about 28 years into the life of Tencel, and. Um, when Tencel came into the market, it's, its USP, its unique selling point, was responsible manufacturing. And I can tell you from experience, nobody cared a toss for environmental things. So it's quite amusing when I walk around the show like this, where everybody's claiming to be whiter than white. So nobody cared in those days, and so we had to try and develop product on the back of different things like performance, aesthetic, whatever else. And um, in the last few years, we found the best way to do that is to create collections and create collections with supply chain partners. Um, I think what, is, what has helped us is that I think over the last 10 years, last five years, denim has completely changed. Um, we recently ran um, um, a series of articles on our blog called The Modern Definition of Denim, and there we had industry people talking about how they saw denim today. And denim today is pr still primarily cotton, but not exclusively. It's primarily indigo, but not exclusively. And it's primarily made into jeans, but not exclusively. In fact, um, Jeans City in Amsterdam, they decided to open an archive and they were going to have 501 pieces in this archive um, as an homage to Levi's 501. And the first person that was invited to put a garment into that archive was Adriano Goldschmidt. And the product he brought to put in the archive was a knitted jean. So even people who have spent 50 years in the industry are kind of recognizing that things have changed. Uh, so on the back of that, we have done many collaborations to try and show off Tencel in different guises. So this is what you might understand Tencel to, to, traditionally to be mainly 100% ladies wear. But we've also done collaborations on stretch, collaborations on piece dye and on garment dye, collaborations on jacquard and on, on coating, and even on knit indigo that we did with, with Santoni. Also, we did, we worked with a designer who was, who usually designed for catwalk, and that's what this one is here. So we've done many things. So the one area that we'd never been in before was, was what I would call vintage type things. Garments that would be traditionally 100% cotton. And actually the first thing that ever we were involved with was the Levi's engineer gene. So 1999, this product came out. This was cotton warp and tensile weft. And this ran for about seven or eight years. And really this was the first product that we could say that was in this type of area that we're trying to work. So we decided that we would like to do something in the vintage area, which really 
is the area of 100% cotton and we wanted to challenge that. So we kind of looked at it as the final frontier as an homage to, uh, to uh, Star Trek. And I don't know if this, in English, one of the famous lines was, you know, it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. So this is Tencel, Jim, as not as we know it. So um, I'm just going to run a video about the backstory to this, and then we'll open it up to a panel. <laughs>
Okay. You want to sit over here with us? Great. So now that you had a chance to understand a little bit behind the collection, we wanted to give a, a little insight into how we developed the collection um, and introduce the, the design team that put it all together. So Hello. if you'd like to introduce yourselves first. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Carmen Santa Cruz. I'm creative director at Dinologia. Hi, uh, my name's Morsen. I'm the creative director of Endrime and Denim History. And Sadia Rafiq, and I'm also an Endrime um, art director. They're a power couple there. So first, Mosin's going to take us through some of the highlights. Yeah. Um, and in this presentation, with, which Mosin put together, it goes through all of the garments that are in the capsule. Um, and you'll give some a little bit of detail behind that. Yeah, so basically, uh, every, we've been doing the same... Well, we always like to document everything that we do, even with our own brand and any collaborations that we do. But we were most excited about telling that story. And we worked with nine amazing mills. We worked with like Jean Loggia. And it would be such a shame to just do a, a project and it's on a show and no one knows about it. So we, we, actually, we, actually, we actually spoke to both like Trisha and Michael. And we said, wouldn't it be good if we told individual stories about every garment in the collection. So the first one was the overall, and Michael actually helped write this document for us about the history of, 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 the, of the actual overall. And then we've, oh, we have an archive of more than a 1,000 vintage garments, and Michael and, and even Carme has come, come to see it. And it's so inspiring, and it's all, you can get inspired by so many different things, but this particular garment was amazing. It's a, a, a vintage garment from the 30s, and it's, got, it's from um, a, a brand called Red Camel. It's got amazing details on the back, it's got printed like um, uh, sort, of, sort, of, sort of straps. Also, the, the actual treatment, this has been worn naturally. So it's got dirt on it still. The thread color is amazing. It's ecru. There's all these things that are all like, all like, mis all like mis sort of like misconceptions. So what we did is we actually recreated this garment, but we used um, an amazing 10, 10 cell uh, repeat fabric from a mill called like Kaihara, which was amazing because Kaihara don't often do collaborations with a lot, of, a lot of people. So we were happy with that. So that's the first garment. And then every garment that we do, we feel it's very important to, because when things were made in like the 50s, they overlocked things, they made things really fast. But when it came to doing it for end rhyme and a collaboration with like sort of, like, you know, with carved in blue, like lensing and like sort of, like, sort of, sort of, sort of, like Lodger, we made sure that we told that story, but we also told the story from the, the inside. We hate overlocking and every single thing that we do is made to an extremely high level. And so we partnered up with um, an amazing factory called Black Horse Lane. So they actually made all our, samples for production, but we did all the prototyping in like West Sussex, which is really, really funny. So anyway, so this is the actual washed garment. So we made every garment we made raw, and then we went over to our friends at La Jean Lodger, and then together with those guys, amazing, we spent, you know, it wasn't that long. We did it really, really quickly, but they're so well organized as well. So, you know, they had already done all the research on all of the fabrics. They knew exactly what shade levels to go for. They've also got an amazing archive as well. So going there, we got inspired by their archive and a bit of our archive and together with Sadia's branding. And yeah, we created some of these garments. So every garment, so Carme can jump in now, tell us more about this particular one. It's got a really nice low rating. Well, the main thing, not only in this one, but in general is that uh, what we are doing is to get the most vintage and authentic look, but always having a low impact uh, on, the, on the garment finishing. We measure this with our software that it's called EIM, and it's becoming an, an, an standard in the industry. And, and it's important to have uh, this low impact during the garment finishing. And the main thing is only also to know uh, the impact that we are doing, because if we don't know the, the impact, we can never improve. So this is our goal. And of course, um, having a, a fabric quiz sometimes mixed with cotton, but the, the tensile fiber, it's a very sensitive fiber when you use the laser. So that helps a lot when you, it's, it's very easy to laser these kind of fabrics and not to use potassium permanganate, for example. So the, the garment finishing at the end, using technology and trying to do it in a different, more innovative approach than the traditional techniques. It's also possible because we have test the fabrics and also we have test fabrics with tensile that are much more sensitive. 
Nice. Okay, so that's the first one. And then, uh, as, like, as like Trisha mentioned, we like to document everything. So we've actually made a booklet, which is 100 and 112 pages. If you go to our booth, which is in the, in like, in, in like, in, in like the key house, we've actually got these exact garments together with the inspiration garments, and we've gone through really amazing detail of exactly how the, how the collection was actually made. So definitely take a look. And you can see here also the, the four... The four main like collaborators, we actually put them on the on the actual straps of the of the, of the light suspender, which was really quite a nice little touch, and the branding as well. Sadia took care of that. Do you want to jump in a little bit about the branding? Sure. Um, so essentially, I just looked at really early workwear. Um, obviously, this one is um, based on a lot of the old Lee graphics, and we just basically, I just really loved all the um, the sweet or um, artworks from that time because it's full of illustration, it's really colorful, and um, I just wanted to draw from that inspiration and then also looking at jumping ahead to early animation, uh, like 1930s, 1920s. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. So. Thank you. Anyway, and you can see here also the reproduction or our interpretation of it and then the old one as well. So always, always, like, always like referencing the past but like modernizing it. So it's quite fun. And then the chore jacket, which was, I think, Michael's like, favorite. So we did a little like, sort of like, historical reference, reference there. Then this is the, the, the original one that I've got. I've got many, but this is one of, one of the ones that I quite like from the archive. And we, re, we actually recreated it. And not only that, we went to extreme details of even finding the correct kind of button. These are buttons that you can only get in Japan. It was really, it was a bit insane. We went really in depth, actually. And then we, but my god, this one here, it washed so well. And Carl May can tell us more about it. That, you know, it's like unbelievable. We had people um, come to see this collection, and they didn't actually believe that it, that it was brand new and only made like one week ago. You know, so it was uh, impressive. So Carl May, if you want to jump in about this, this one. This this finish was a, a really a challenge because finally we we developed a laser design uh, inspired by one of our garments from from our archive. So. All the, the used areas that you are seeing, and if you have the chance to see this, this garment uh, live, uh, you will see. And, and well, we laser it all over, but also we, we made some ribs using the laser. There is no manual work here, and the dirty has been done using nano bubbles. So it's really a kind of piece of art doing it, uh, made with, with technology. And something else also, uh, when we say laser, it's not done very fast, and it can be done fast, but this is actually, it was two panels for the front, two panels for each sleeve, times two. So actually doing a jacket, it's like eight different steps to laser, and then all the other little steps as well. So it's The still... main thing, yeah, sometimes you can spend more time lasering the garment, but then, then you, you only need a quick finish, quick wash, yeah. and that's all. So because you are adding all the character through the laser. Sometimes you are doing a, a more short lasering marking, and then adding more steps using nanobubbles, our e-flow, whatever. So there is, in the end, we are combining in different ways, different technologies, so you'll get different results. But the results literally speak for themselves, particularly, particularly this, this, this one here. And we went to the extent of even doing like small branding, like little square, like woven, woven labels. And then these are the buttons, these are the ring buttons that we got, you know, that it's just so, like normally you wouldn't go to this type of level to make a collection. It's like we went all out for it, which we, we really enjoyed. We did another version as well, which we couldn't decide which one, but we, we ended up doing two. And these are all the, all, all the, like, all the details for the, the actual chore, chore jacket. And then type two one. So this is one's a bit more closer to my heart. I love, I love jackets, and Sadia's got one that she's not wearing right now. But and actually, like, Trisha's wearing one of the jackets that's that's actually in the actual actual like, collection. But the type two is really interesting because um, the, his, the history of it. Many many people thought it started with a type one, and it didn't. So I like looked at really early inspiration from 18, 18, 18, 1870s. But then this is this is the actual type two jacket that we got right here. So this is from 1953. It's worth a couple of grand. It's really expensive. But the thing is about it, it even though it's made in 19 like 19 like from 1950, there's still aspects of it that are astonishing. Where the fact it's it's now got the it's got the two tabs at, at the bottom. Also the inside is is also it's it's not finished that that sort of well. So when it came to our jacket, and hopefully I've got pictures of it that are going to come up. There we go. We, we, we made sure it was super duper clean on like the, on, like, the inside. And we put selvage as well on the inside, inside collar. 
we ended up putting a cinch back on it. I know it's a bit blasphemous, but I put a cinch on the type on the type two. There'll be many people that'll be annoyed that I've actually done that. And then again, this 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 like this like this like particular fabric, we used the ITMA awarded Candiani fabric. So this is actually probably one of the most sustainable fabrics in the room, really, that we use. So we're honoured to use it. Yeah, and I'll just add a little bit to why this fabric is so sustainable is because it's a denim fabric that uses no new cotton. So here, taking this totally vintage style, but reinterpreting it using new technology where it is using 50% recycled cotton from Candiani's mill waste and 50% refibra, which uses upcycled cotton. So this really does take us all into a new level. And that was a part of, it, of this fabric winning the ITMA Sustainable Innovation Award in 2019. And lots of little things, like all the, all the denim geeks and, uh, in the room, if they come closer to this collection, they'll see. It's got all the like, missed stitches. It's got all the, all the little mistakes that you would find from that era. But we've modernized it with a, with a, like, a like, continuous stitch, which catches all, all the pleats. So modernizing it and adding like, the Van Dyke stitching on the inside, adding like, self, self, selvage details, which shouldn't really be there as well. And then, yeah, this, the inside of it is just stunning. And it could even be worn inside out. So it's quite lovely. And this, that's, that's actually the first proto that we ever made. So that's actually the one that I sewed myself. And Carme and her team washed it. I think I made it, I made it on Monday and she was washing it on Thursday. So, you know, that's impressive. And that's the one that was floating around the booth for many, many times as well. I think that might be the one that you're actually, actually wearing now. So amazing. And so, Carme, do you want to go into this jacket a little bit? Well, again, uh, playing with uh, well, honeycombs and, and used areas. And the main thing also is that we are keeping one garment row, so you can, you can tell the difference between exactly. the row uh, fabric and the one that has been processed with Genealogia Technologies. So. Yeah, that's quite fun as well. As you have showing the raw collection together with the washed, uh, designers and buyers can actually see the collection and go, oh, I can actually understand how it can wash down. And that's the whole point of doing uh, collaborations like, like, like this, is we can inspire lots of other people to think, oh, we could use a tensile or we could use another type of fiber in our collection. Now we're going into the, the shirt now. So shirts are quite interesting. They've been around for thousands and thousands of years. But the history of the shirt, especially the work, work shirt, is quite cool. But if you can go onto the booth, you can actually take a picture of that or go on there and have to actually read it. It's really, I've, I learned a lot from when I was like researching this actual collection. But I have many from this period, including ones that I've been, have got the whole like suspender marks done from the, from, from like the cotton fields. It's quite sad, really. But our workwear interpretation one, this fabric we used, was 98% tensile with 2% cotton. And the cotton is actually the stripe, which is amazing. So, but it washed down so well. We were so, I was a bit, I was a bit scared using it because it was quite lightweight and I was quite uncomfortable. But man, it washed so well. And um, I was really quite happy with this one. But yeah. And this, this fabric is actually from KG Denim, yep. who's exhibiting here at Blue Zone. There you go. Kame, so it's Kame, did you have problems with this fabric because it was so, so lightweight? No, in fact, it's 100% that cell. So it oh, was it really? Yeah, it was really, really easy to laser it on, on it. Even though that it's a very lightweight fabric, uh, we haven't any issue and we, we didn't use any chemicals. So Amazing. That was nice. So yeah, that's all cool. And then we did the little, we, we like rounded off the collars and we put Van Dyke stitching on it as well. We did a like continuous stitch around the, around the pocket as well with our little mist stitches. And we got our little watch strap thing, chain, also, and then all the details. Uh, sorry to step in, but I think that it's also uh, something that, that it's a, a challenge that we are using 100% fabric in our workwear collection. So if you have the opportunity to go to the Carving Blue Lansing booth in Key House, take it because it's really a, a innovative collection with a very heritage look. So Yeah, it's cool. Good. And then the carpenter pants, that's got a, a history that's very close to the overall as well. But this particular one, what's nice about it, it's got lots of angled, angled details, um, very workwear, work, work, workwear driven. This is one of the early examples of a, um, of a, of a carpenter style pocket on the side, also the hammer loop as well. And then the actual, the, something, the nice thing about the branding that we did, we did it all in-house. So we got these all done at Black Horse Lane. We didn't go, out, we didn't go somewhere and got like thousands of them developed. We only made like 20 or 30 and that's how many we use and they were burnt on the spot. Even all the ones that were slightly like mistake versions, we use those as well. Because I don't believe in having a perfect like leather patch or anything like that. So it's really important. But this one also washed down extremely well. We used the fabric from, um, 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 Atlantic Mills, so they actually turned out really nice. 
Uh, so let's go into that one. Uh, Kame, do you want to yeah, talk about In fact, it's the same fabric that we saw in the core jacket. That's right. And it's a very, very beautiful medium blue color, and we can fade down easily using G two O ozone technology. So no need to bleach, bleach it. So that's why. For us, it's very important to test it in advance, just to be sure that later on the, the finishing part will be as mold as efficient and sustainable possible. What's nice about this particular garment also, as I said, I hate overlocking. So uh, any opportunity to fell both the seams on the leg, I do it. And this particular one, because it wasn't a selvage fabric, we did that. And it actually it added more effect to it because it added more... Um, roping in some like some some like some like respect, which is really fun. And we did a one-piece fly on this one as well, which is really really beautiful. And yeah, here's a tent, there's a story on the, of the, how the garment was made and all the main like main like details. And then we're on the workwear pattern. This one's actually quite beautiful. So in the 1930s, obviously up until the 30s, most ladies actually wore men's men's jeans. Actually, uh, Levi's were one of one of the first to do their lady like Levi's jean. But in this era, many, many people were coming up with la ladies jeans. So we've got one in our archive, which is from the 30s. And actually, Carme sent me over a mood board of what she wished for the collection. And on the mood board was one of these styles. And I laughed going, I've actually got one. So it was actually really easy for us. We just literally got this style and we, re we recreated it. There's really no point trying to um, make something better. But what we did was we enhanced it from the inside. We didn't use any overlocking. And beautiful things, when you learn about old garments, you learn about, they use stitches that we don't use anymore. They use like um, a like, sort of like, a, like three sixteenth stitch around the pocket opening. They use details that you can't do anymore. You have to have old machinery to do it. So it's really quite, even like a, like a, tri like a triple stitch on the back, it had a, a female yoke. So the yoke was going towards the back of the garment, not going up. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful really. And as, as a really, and I, re I really enjoyed pat or sort of pattern cutting it because I don't get to do much like, much like women's wear that much. So really quite fun. And this one here, Carme's team went to town on it. So yeah, I'll let you go into that. In fact, this is my favorite garment of the collection. Yeah. Uh, uh, we use a very beautiful fabric from Morta. And yeah, when you see the garment live, the, the key thing is that you think that it's a really a vintage garment. And I, I really like it. The fabric itself was really drapey, loose weave. When I felt the fabric, I knew instantly it's perfect for a women's 50s or 30s pan, like instantly. Um, so it washed down. And then all the, all the details as well. Again, even this particular garment didn't have any pocketing, but we managed to stamp on the inside of the garment as well, which was really cool. And then the infamous self selvage jeans. You can't talk about a collection without doing proper selvage jeans. So obviously, we all know that the jean was invented in 18, 1873 from like Levi Strauss and Jacob, Jacob Davis. We all know that story really well. But and you know, and yes, I've got tons of these, but I ended up picking something from an archive that I had that was just inspiring, really, just inspiring, especially for the whisk, the whisk, the, the whiskery marks. We just took some inspiration from it. But what we did was we made a gene that was, I would say, the most highest cal caliber gene we could ever, ever make, to a point where it was clean finished. It was using a one eighth um, twin needle on the fly. Obviously, we, had, we even did little things where we put a cinch back on it, but we added the cinch after the leather patch was put, put on. And then the inside, stunning inside, like sort of like, actual like details. A stamp story we told the whole ten cell history. Well, this particular garment is also using the Candiani Itma like awarded fabric as well. Very honoured. And we leather backed all, all our buttons, and we even made carved in blue like rivets as well for this collection. And real rivets, not the fake ones that are pretty much every, everywhere. We did little peekaboo selvage as well. If anyone knows what that that means. And yeah, uh, so this particular one was obviously Carme's team wash, wash, washed it as well. If you want to go into that, Carme? Then when you have a, a garment like this, it's a classic uh, uh, 5-0 jeans. And, and with this fabric, you don't need more than, than uh, nice lasering and uh, nice fading now. So we, we did it with, obviously, using, using laser technology at the beginning. And then washing down with, with ozone. And nice. There we go. And all of this, guys, you can get from our booth. If you go on our booth, there's, there's actually QR codes for every garment. So you can, down, you can, you can actually download this. It's all, it's all there. And we also did a, a dungaree dress as well, which was really nice. This particular fabric was, was, was actually, in my comfort zone, it was really stretchy. So I was nervous doing it, but you guys managed to do it really well. And you managed to actually wash it extremely well, well, well as well. We used special like, dungaree clips from like, Japan. I don't know if you guys go around, the, go around and actually look at, look, look at the clips. Most of them are about three and a half, four cm. We ended up getting the ones that are five cm. So the real authentic ones, which we're really proud of. 
come. Here, in fact, we were combining a super stretchy fabric with a no ring look at all. So we were creating the slabs virtually through the laser, and also we applied some uh, pigment staves, but also we, we, we applied it and fix it with the laser. So we were trying to change totally the structure and the character of the fabric through, through the technology. Nice. And the details. And then the final garment we made was the apron. And, um, you know, aprons have been around for like a millennia and you can still find them everywhere. But our particular one, we referenced from one that I picked up in like Japan. So the repro one's on our booth. And we actually decided to use three different fabrics for this one. And, and we ended up using some of the extra leftover fabrics for the rest of the collection for the internals, which was really nice. And we ended up, we ended up really, really damaging it in a really cool way. I don't know if Carmay can jump in and tell us that story. In fact, well, this is an all over laser texture. We had a small accident, but then the accident, it was really something that we wanted to keep. So we reproduced it. So it was quite <laughs> funny. Yeah, it was funny. I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, go and have a look at this garment. The fabrics themselves are really, really special. And then nearly at the end, and the trims and branding. Sadia, you want to jump in here or tell us more about? Or do you want to tell us more about the buttons and the actual woven labels that you developed? Um, yep. So essentially, we looked at um, early workwear again, and um, just going for a really clean um, finish on the button trim graphic. And um, it was really important to get a different size of the woven labels because. Um, just looking at the old garments and like how, how they used to be shaped and where they sat on the actual garment um, meant that we wanted to do sm a little small square one and a rectangular one and a leather patch. So, yeah. We also made a series of dead denim banners. You can't do a denim collection, especially an authentic one, and you don't produce a banner at the end, the, uh, at the end of it. So we were sitting on really nice graphics that Sadia had actually like, created. So we decided to put some of them on denim banners. And these are really be beautiful things as well. And I think that might be it. So thank you so much. Trisha, do you so, want to? Yeah, a couple more questions. So thank you for taking us through some of the design and inspiration. And maybe just to, to explain a little bit more, you know, when you go around the show here, there's so many fabrics. There's so many stories. How do you feel? What, what do you look for most in finding the right fabrics? What, what, does, what speaks to you about that? For me, it's all about slub pattern. I'm, I'm a very authentic designer, even though I design for High Street as well and everyone else. But when I get to design a, like, a, a, like a dream collection or something quite inspiring, I always make sure it can, it can go the extra mile. I can get a lot of washes out of it as well. But something very, very like, authentic. Even like Kame was on the booth yesterday and I said, tell me if there's anything cool on the show because I haven't got time to look. So, you know, so she knows our handwriting already. We're quite similar. So um, it's, it's that authenticness, I, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Carme, what, what speaks to you in fabrics? For me, obviously, authenticity is important in denim. I think that everybody looks to heritage and looks for authenticity. But it's not only about this, because, because there are too many approaches to the, to the denim nowadays. So, but the me, for me, the, the main thing is that a fabric should work efficiently during the washing process. Yeah. If you are not washing, you are keeping raw, perfect. Mm. That's uh, fantastic. You don't need to invest time into look for how is it going, how are you washing. But if you are designing for a brand and you are washing and, and thinking about washing, you need to pick something that is uh, working well with new technologies, mainly because then your production will be more sustainable. Yeah. And you have to think about this during the design process. So um, Michael had done the introduction and given us a little bit about the brief for this capsule. Um, and during that time frame, I mean, it, it took over a year to kind of put all of this did. together. It did. Which is a very long time. I mean, what did you see that sort of changed in the vision and how did that evolve? Tell um, us a little bit about that. We, initi we like initially met and we got um, a mood board from Carme actually of her wish list. There was like nine garments you wanted to try and, try and like, develop. She was excited because... You know, we don't often, none of us get often to design a collection like this, I'll be honest with you. Very commercial collections, we all develop, like, you know. So, um, but the design philosophy, it, it came together really, really, really quite quickly. I think once we started designing, it only took us, like, it took me, I think, about three days to pattern cut it. And then, I think on the fifth day, we were already in, like, already in, like, Junologia, and it took me two days to sew it. So, I made all the first protos myself with good music. And then things did change. We changed some internals. We changed some construction. 
Uh, there were some washing things that I wanted, we wanted to develop, so we had to be a little bit careful. But um, it came together really quick, really quickly. It just, we took our time documenting it, and we had the luxury of time, so, and we don't, you don't get that very, very often. Always you get like a week or two weeks to design a collection. So, um, but we managed to pull it off quite fast, but we took our time making all the documentation and getting all the branding right, and we spent some extra time on the buttons. They took like three months to like develop. So once we knew we had a a extra time, then we developed all these, all these other things that we can, can, can develop. And Carme, for you, from the original mood boards to, to where it evolved? I think that, that we, we keep finally, I mean, the, the direction that the, we were initially marked. And the main thing, I think, is because all of us, we were aligned. So we, we worked hard at the beginning. We planned the collection. Obviously, we made some changes. But in the end, uh, the, the making, the production, as, as Moshin said, it was quick because we spent time thinking, thinking about it, testing fabrics, choosing fabrics, and, and preparing everything just to be done in the right time. So we, yeah, had to, we were aligned. We had to like reverse engineer the collection. So even though I had pattern cut it and made the first samples and started did all the branding, once we got the green light from Michael and Trisha, we then had to go to a factory and make 13 or 14 pieces of the same garment. And um, that was like, so we could have actually scaled this up to 1,000 pieces or 10,000 pieces the way we did it. Like we, we did it to that kind of level, but we only made 15 pieces of each garment. And we have had some requests. I'm sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, Kelly over there wants, wants the jacket. She keeps on like winking at me. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, um, <laughs> so. So one thing I think we were all aligned on in this project was to uh, is around sustainability. But Carmi, can you can you tell us what does sustainability really mean to you in in what you're designing? Well, it means everything because uh, sustainability in in genealogy, well, as the ones that you know our company, we are driving. But sustainability, even when nobody was talking about sustainability, and they see us as a weird or freaks. <laughs> Uh, talking about laser and what? <laughs> Eflow, what? Nanobubbles, what? <laughs> and, and then, well, it's something that drives our design process. I cannot design with, without taking into account how a fabric is going to react, which is the composition, made some tests, and then that it's what drives my designs. I, I don't want to, to design anything crazy that later on it's going to be... A, Meaningless. And, and not only about this, it's going, not going to be uh, efficient in, in terms of production. So I think that the design process is so important because we have to think about not only about the, the aesthetics, the function, but also about the production. I think that it's very, very important to integrate that part during the design process. I think, sorry to just want, I yeah. this collection has changed the way I design to a point where now I don't want to use cotton anymore. I've really changed how I think about denim from this one collection that we did. Like every, now going forward, it's like we're only going to be using fabrics like this now. It's, it's a, as 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 like you know Alberto Candiani said in the last presentation. It's actually challenging and quite fun to working like this, rather than yeah, you can use 100% cotton and get the same results. But getting the same results from a 10 cell lie, lie cell, that's a challenge, and it's actually quite fun. So I really enjoyed that. So do you want to add anything? Um, I think for us especially, I mean, we hadn't worked with Tencel fabrics before. And I think we probably had some expectations or we, we were probably wondering how this fabric's really going to burn down. How is it going to laser down? Like, is it going to look good? You know, is it going to look authentic? And Kame was so relaxed. She was like, yeah, it's going to be great. And um, she, had, she had done all, all of the tests prior to all this, so yeah. she. Yeah. And I think that you know there was a, I think there was a level of trust on all parts on this project, but it just worked really well because everything, everything kind of just flowed and it just came out really well. So I think it just, um, our expectations were, you know, they were, they were just really good results. We were just really happy with how what you could actually do with this fabric. So, so Mosin, we're here five years from now. It's 2025. Do you think we're still going to be able to show this collection? Absolutely. I think we'll be on version three or three or four by that stage. We're doing another collection this autumn. It's going to be quite fun, a secret collection at the moment, but you, but you all know about it. <laughs> Not so secret. Don't, don't tell anyone, but we're working on another one. And, um, 
but yeah, not so secret, but it's fine. And then it's between us. And then um, hopefully more of the merrier. I think if more people designed in this way and shared it like we are, because you know we've been very open about the fabrics we used, how we did all the washing, what, what EMI rating it got, and we're happy to share all this information out. So the more sharing, the better, I think. Yes, very transparent in how this was put together. Yeah. So uh, in closing, um, just in one word, what does this uh, capsule mean to you then, Carme? What would you say? Innovation. I'll let Sadi go. Put you on the spot. <laughs> I'd say, um, innovation is a fantastic one. Um, oh, oh, I, I don't know. I would say heritage, heritage and innovation. Heritage, innovation. Um, it's been quite epic, to be honest. Epic. Epic, epic would it's be the word. It's a perfect word for you, Mosa. It's very authentic, actually. Yes. Good, good. Mm. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, if you'd like to see more of the hardware collection, you can come visit us at the Key House. So you can see all of the pieces, look at the original vintage garments, and see how we transformed uh, in this process, and how we use tensile lyocell and tensile lyocell with refibra technology to bring new innovation into the denim market. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.